Hello and welcome to this next problem. Uh, another single factor ANOVA, completely randomized design. Uh, this is, I think, the third one that I've done like this, so I'm just going to go through these ones uh, a little bit faster, I think, and we get some of the idea of the, uh, just how it's done. So we'll just kind of walk through the calculations, and maybe there'll be some things with this one that'll be a little bit different from what we've seen before. So let's just get into it, and we'll uh, talk about things as they arise. So here we're looking at a new type of glass that's been developed uh, to use in uh, areas at risk of earthquakes. Three types of glass have been developed, and the company, of course, only wants to manufacture one of them. In order to test the strength of the glass, the window panes of identical sizes are placed in a machine designed to shake the glass in a manner that simulates the stress uh, that it would endure in an earthquake. And in the most severe earthquakes, the shaking can last as long as five minutes. So here are data that contains the amount of time each window pane uh, uh, the amount of time before each window pane shattered uh, is recorded, and uh, here here's the data that we have to work with. Okay, so here we have three treatments, three different types of windows. Uh, we have a uh, different number of observations uh, for each of these samples, and so that will change our calculations um, just a little bit. It won't, it won't change much, but it'll take away some of the shortcuts that we would have um, when sample sizes are identical. That, that helps speed things up. So we kind of will lose out on that. And we have our variances and we have our sample means. So, okay, let's um, let's just get into our, our NOVA here. So this is going to be, uh, we'll put treatment, uh, error, and total, sum of squares, degrees of freedom, mean square, F, P, and critical F, let's just do as alpha O5. And uh, here let's put our hypotheses. So we have three treatments. So we should have uh, three means, mu1, mu2, mu3. Of course, not all are equal. Good, okay, so now we can get into this partitioning of the variation. So same idea, SST, we split that total variation, the total sum of squares, we divide it into its two sources, treatment and error. So let's uh, go through and calculate SSTR first. Of course, we're still missing actually one piece of information. And you'll see that as soon as I write this formula down right there. We need that grand mean first. So let's calculate that. So here we have treatments uh, that are of different sample sizes, so we should calculate the weighted average. So our grand mean is going to be the sample size of 1 times the mean of 1, sample size of 2 times the mean of 2, same for mean of 3, divided by the total number of observations. Now, honestly, if you were to just take your calculator and calculate the mean of the means, I'm almost certain you'll actually get really close to what we're about to calculate here. And the reason for that being is that these sample sizes, yes, they're different, but by only one or two observations. Uh, so it's not going to really make a huge impact. The difference is going to be more pronounced when you have samples of very different sizes. But nonetheless, we want to be uh, as precise as possible. So we'll do this in the proper way, our weighted average. So here I'm taking our sample sizes and I'm, I'm multiplying by our sample means down here, divided by five plus six plus seven. So our grand mean here is going to be five times 5.2 six times 5.4, seven times 5.8, 99 divided by 18. Observation, so 5.5 is our grand mean. I'll just scribble that down over here just in case. Okay, so let's um, 
Let's go ahead and calculate our sum of squares there. So here it's going to be a different sample size. So this, this is why this n is contained within that summation sign. As you'll see in some of the later ANOVAs that we'll do, sample sizes will always be by design exactly the same size. And so that n kind of gets factored out of the summation. But in this case, because the samples uh, can be a different size, the n is contained within the summation sign. So this is 5 times 5.2 minus 5.5. So again, I'm looking at these three means and their difference from that grand mean. And this one is 6 times 5.4 minus 5.8 squared. And the next one, oops, there we go. 7 times 5.8 minus uh, 5.5 .5 squared, I almost missed that little mistake right there. That should be 5.5, .5. there we go. Okay, let's get that calculator out of the way. Can we put it over here, yes. Okay, so five times, open the brackets, 5.2 minus 5.5 .5 squared plus six times. 5.4 minus 5.5 .5 squared plus 7 times 5.8 minus 5.5 .5 squared equals 1.14. Okay, so that's not so bad. Oops. So let's fill that in down here 1.14. Degrees of freedom, k equals three, and this is k minus one, so this is going to be two. 114 divided by two is 57. Good. Let's come back up here, clear a little bit of room, and SSE is next. So SSE, now we're working with uh, these values here. Now notice this is the variance that we are given, and of course the formula, nj minus one times the variance. In some instances, you may be given the standard deviation, in which case you would need to square it. Here we're given the variance, so we have to make sure that we don't square it again. So this is going to be five minus one times 0.19. 6, I said 6 and wrote a 5, 6 minus 1 times 13, and the last one, 7 minus 1 times 0.13. Calculator. So this is 4 times 0.19 plus 5 times 0.13 plus 6 times 0.13, 6 Four, one, something's not right there. Let me try that again. Four times 0.19 plus five times 0.13 plus six times 0.13 equal. That's more like it, 219. I don't know what I did last time. 2.19 degrees of freedom, NT minus K, so NT, we have five plus six plus seven, we have 18 observations, 18 minus three treatments, so this is 15 degrees of freedom. And then filling in the rest here for SST, 219 plus 1.14, 3.33 degrees of freedom here, so this is NT minus one, again that's 18 minus one is 17, which is also 15 plus two. Okay, and now we want mean squared error, so I'm gonna take 2.19 SSE divided by 15 degrees of freedom, one, uh, 0.146, let's say 0.15. Okay, good, we're almost there. Uh, F statistic. So F statistic, this is always 
MSTR divided by MSE. So for us, this is going to be 0.57 divided by 0.15. So 0.57 divided by 0.15 is 3.8. Okay, let's uh, let's go to our F tables. I want that critical F has two degrees of freedom and fifteen degrees of freedom in the num uh, in the denominator. So we go to our F tables. Numerator is two. Coming down, I want to come down, down, down. There's two fifteen degrees of freedom. So here I'm looking at this block of numbers. Alpha was 0.05. So there's 0.05, so that gives me a critical value 3.682. 3.682, okay, so here we have F distribution, oops. I don't wanna go too low right there. F distribution, here we have our F of 3.682. That defines our rejection space. Our test statistic is 3.8. Given that this is zero out here, and it's increasing as we move further out, 3.8 is larger than 3.6. So we have a test statistic that falls into our rejection space. So we can reject now. Before we get carried away, let's verify that. We'll use the p-value approach. So we wanna look for this test statistic of 3.8. And if we look in our block of numbers here, 3.8 is somewhere in between those two, 3.6 and 4.7. So our p-value is somewhere in between 0.025 and, uh, and 0.05. So our p-value here is something less than 0.05, greater than 0.025. So that's good. That still uh, gives us the same conclusion here that um, the p-value is less. All we really need is this part here. It is less than 0.05. It is less than alpha. So that confirms our conclusion to reject uh, this null hypothesis. So what does that mean? It means we have evidence to show that not all of them are equal. In this case, we're looking at window panes. Uh, so there's definitely a statistical difference uh, with at least one of these different window panes. Uh, now the joys of small sample sizes and, and small number of treatments is that we have the luxury. You can probably look at these numbers and take a pretty good educated guess which one it might be. But for the sake of practice, we are now going to, well, I'm going to actually start another video for this. I'll keep these ones short. Uh, we'll now get into part B. We'll perform Fisher's LSD test uh, to identify where the difference exists. Okay, so I'll end this video here, uh, and then we'll come right back and we'll um, go through a Fisher's LSD. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.